Ray with Jamie Ray Vintage. Today's DIY is how to upholster our Queen Anne chair. I'm going to show you how to take the fabric off of these. I'm going to be painting the wood on them and then reupholstering them with a new fabric and using my faux grain sack technique on the back. If you're interested in how to do a faux grain sack, be sure to check the link below and you can check out my video on faux grain sacks. The first thing we're going to do is remove our fabric. I'm using my pliers and I'm just ripping off the trim. Once I get the trim off, then I'm going to take off the fabric. Sometimes it's kind of difficult so I use my screwdriver and get it in here and then I just peel the fabric up with that. And then I'm going to go all the way around and remove the fabric and then whenever I have staples poking up I'll use my needle nose pliers to take those out. If you've got a good strong husband that's also a good option because they can rip this apart fairly quickly. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all ripped apart. Once you get the fabric off you'll have your foam and, or your batting whatever is in here. You want to keep this intact so I'm going to go ahead and remove this and put it somewhere safe so that way I can reuse it. If it's dirty and gross you'll need to get new batting and replace it. All of our fabrics been removed from our chairs so the next step is going to be to paint them. If you didn't want to paint your chairs or your that finishes in really great shape, you could just go on to upholstery. I really want to add a nice light edge to our chairs. So I, they're going to get the Fairy Chalk Mother treatment. I'm going to be using Fairy Chalk Mother Single Step Paint and Fresh Cream. If you'd like to buy Fairy Chalk Mother, you can go to my website, jamierayvintage.com. I'm going to paint two coats of Fairy Chalk Mother's paint, and then I'm going to add some smeary wax. The nice thing about Fairy Chalk Mother paint is that it goes on really smooth. It has a leveling agent so it levels out your brush strokes and it covers really well. I went ahead and I cleaned my piece before I started so any grease and dirt was removed but no sanding or priming is required. Sometimes I do prime with lighter colors so that way my paint goes farther but since this is a cream it covers really well so I'm just going to paint two coats on there and I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. We have three coats of fresh cream on our chairs and the next step is going to be to distress them. I'm using two sanding blocks. The first sanding block I'm going to use is got 60 grit sandpaper on here and I'm going to use that to take a bulk of the paint off. I want it to be an old world chippy look so I'm going to use that and then after I'm done with that I'm going to follow it behind with my 120 grit block and that's going to smooth out any of the edges to make it nice and smooth and a soft texture. So I just take this and go over the details. And you can see where I'm distressing that it's bringing out some of the darker detail underneath and that's exactly what we want. I'm going to follow it behind with this 120 grit to smooth out the surface of any brush strokes and to smooth any of the paint that might be raised from distressing it. That way it doesn't peel off anymore. I'm going to do that to this entire chair really detailing all of the edges and the pretty work that's on here and then we'll go to our next step. The next step I'm going to do to these chairs is use our Fairy Chalk Mother Antiquing Glaze. And I'm just going to put on my paper towel here and rub it directly on my piece. If I didn't want such a dirty dark look then I would seal the piece first with poly or clear wax. But I want a really dark aged look so I'm doing it straight over the chalk paint because the chalk paint is going to soak up that, that dark glaze. You can see now I'm wiping it off with a clean part of my paper towel and it stays in the crack and then it tints the color of the paint to make it a little more brown. I'm going to do the whole thing just like this and then when I'm done with that we'll seal it with polyurethane and be ready to upholster. We're back here, our glazing is all done and then Zeb sealed it with polyurethane so that way it's going to be durable and will last a long time. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to add our fabric to our seat. I did a faux grain sack for the front and then a special design for the back and like I said if you want to see how to make your own grain sack check the link below and watch our grain sack video. So I'm going to use my fabric that I've cut for the bottom. It's got a navy blue stripe right down the middle. I cut it bigger than my seat is so that way I can cut it down later. So I'm going to want to make sure that my stripe is lining up right in the middle of my seat. Make sure that's good. 
And then I'm going to push the fabric underneath here and over here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is staple that stripe in place. If it wasn't a striped fabric, then I'd probably just staple the front and then the back. But I just want to make sure that it doesn't wiggle around on me. I'm using my air compressed staple gun. If you don't have an air compressed staple gun, a regular handheld one is just fine. I'm going to double check my stripe with the center of my detail here and make sure that it's centered. I'm going to put one staple in it. I'm going to flip my chair around and pull the stripe nice and taut down to the middle of the back and you can kind of see where the dip is so you can double check your stripe again. Make sure you're where you want to be. Now I'm going to flip around to the front and we're going to do the rest. This is the part that's a little tricky. This is the way I do it. I'm sure there's a million other ways, but I take my fabric and I fold it so that way there's the crease is right where the arm is and I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Okay. I take my scissors and I cut right down the middle of where the arm is. Almost all the way, but not quite. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to come down around the arm of the chair. And it's, the, it's not going to be perfect. And then I'm going to take it, and this is where it's a little scary. I'm just going to pull a little bit and it'll rip just enough to fit around the edge of the chair. Now that I've got that side done, I'm going to do the same thing to this other arm. I'm going to come down around the arm where I've snipped it. And then I'm going to pull just a little bit until I got it nice and taut where I want it. Okay, and you just want to make sure that when you pull on it that there aren't any creases because then you know when you staple it, you won't have creases where your arm is. So now I'm going to staple along the front. It's a lot of feeling. I've done this enough that I can feel where the line is, especially on this chair where it's curved. You got to be careful that you're stapling in the right spot. But if you haven't done this before, I just kind of lift up the fabric and see where my gun is and then put my finger where I want to rest my gun and staple. And then I know that I'm along that line. So I'm going to go ahead and staple all the way across the front and then we'll do our corners. So I'm at the corner, I'm going to staple this here, come down around where it goes on the chair, and I'm going to pull this part back and fold it in nice and taut and then come across here. If you pull it right and you get the right amount of tension, you'll get it to where you don't have any puckers you'll get it to where there's no puckers on the corner. If your seat is a little bit more fluffy, sometimes it's impossible and then you're gonna wanna do an, a pleat effect and you'll pleat and staple and pleat and staple. But this one came around nice and neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this other corner and then I'll show you how to do the back. The next step is gonna be this back part. If I didn't have a stripe, then I wouldn't have a staple here and I could do a nice neat fold. But because I had to have that staple to keep my line straight, it's a little bit more tricky. But you can kind of find the center of where the post is. And I'm gonna take my scissors and cut back to that center. Once I get that way, I'm gonna make kind of a triangle I'm going to flip my triangle inside and that's how I'm going to go around this piece here. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and I'll flip it around and show you how to staple the back. So now I've got this edge here. I folded it over. I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to staple it and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the front and come all the way around here, staple this. Then you come over to the back you fold this edge under, pull it down, staple it, and then come across, staple all the way across here, and then you do the same thing on the other side. You're going to pull this down, staple it, 
and then do the other thing. If when you get to over here, you realize you need to pull it a little, don't be afraid to lift it off the staple, pull it taut and then staple again. It, it'll work out just fine. It's better than having a pucker. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this all the way around the back and I'll show you how to put on the back of the chair. Now that I've got my staple all the way around, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut down the middle or you could start on the side. And then I'm going to just trim off my excess fabric. And if it's not quite close enough, you can come back with smaller scissors and get it, but if you do it right, you just have to cut it once. You just cut it and you'll come around and then I will cover up my staples with trim and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is put on the grain sack that I designed for the back. I'm gonna go ahead and check and make sure that the center of my design goes to the center of the chair and then I'll flip this back. Now that I know that it's centered, I'm going to go ahead and put my first staple in. And then I'm going to take the bottom and make sure the bottom is also centered. And I'm going to staple on the bottom so that way the fabric stays where I want it to. You get real quiet. Okay, so the, now the fabric's where I want it to. I'm going to come across the top and I'm going to look and staple. It's really important that you pay attention where you're stapling because if you staple too close to the edge it will go through and it will crack the edge of your frame and then you'll be real sad the only way to fix that well at least that I have found is to trim put trim around the back too and cover up your mistake but if you do it right you don't have that problem so you're just gonna go around all the edge here and you're gonna staple the fabric on I'm gonna to do top and then I'll do the bottom and then I'll do both of the sides. And you'll wanna make sure when you're pulling on the sides that you're not pulling so tight that you're distorting the graphic on the back. Now that I have my staples all the way around the edge, I'm gonna trim just like I did on the front and get rid of all the excess fabric. So I've got my batting back in here and I'm gonna go ahead and add my last piece of fabric. There's two important things that I'm gonna do. One is I'm going to make sure to not only make it centered, but to line it up with this stripe here. And I've got my other chair because I'm doing a pair and I'm gonna eyeball it to make sure that my monogram on here is the same. And here it's just above the edge of the armrest. So, I eyeball it, that looks about right to me. So I'm gonna put a staple in the top, centered. And then make sure that this bottom part lines up nice and neat with my seat right here. And I'm gonna put a staple and fill where my fabric ends. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and staple this just the way that I did the back. I'm gonna go around the top, the bottom, and then each side and trim it. Let's talk trim. We've got our staples all on here, but we've gotta cover this ugly edge. I like to use a nice wide trim. This is about one inch wide. It, they come in different widths. I wouldn't go over an inch and a half or under half an inch because you need to cover it. But you just pick the trim that works best for you. I like to use this trim because I feel like it complements the drop cloth. But I like to either match my trim to my fabric or the paint that's on my chair. I like to start in the back. I start in this back corner here. And I'm just gonna use my hot glue and go over the staples. And I'm gonna bring this all the way around. I'm gonna come up and around each piece of wood, so there's two in the back and the arms, and then I'll come back to where I started.
The last step is gonna be to put our trim all around our back piece here. So I'm gonna start over on this corner and put our glue around our edge and come a little ways. You don't wanna to put too much glue because you have to kind of hold it down where you want it and you don't want it to dry before you get there. So I put my trim on and then I hold it for about a minute or so and then I go on to my next piece and I'm gonna come all the way around and then I will be done. Our chairs are all finished. We've got our trim glued all the way around the top and the bottom and our upholstery is all done. I love the way they turned out. I'm super in love with the like chippy distressed aged look and I love the faded distress of the drop cloths. If you'd like to purchase the paint I used today, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you'd like to know how to make your own grain sacks for your upholstery jobs, be sure to check our link. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.